On the mound this afternoon for the Chicago Cubs, making his eighth start of the season after spending the last three years in the Cubs' bullpen. Who will Ryan Dempster be facing here to bring us the Diamondbacks' batting order? Their injured second baseman, Orlando Hudson. Hi, I'm Orlando Hudson, and here's d back starting lineup today. Batting first, second baseman, Augie Ojeda. Batting second, our shortstop, Stephen Drew. Batting third, our center fielder, Chris Young. Batting fourth, our first baseman, Connor Jackson. Batting fifth, our right fielder, Justin Upton. Batting sixth, our third baseman, Mark Reynolds. Batting seventh, our catcher, Chris Snyder. Batting eighth, our left fielder, Jeff Salazar. And batting ninth, our rookie pitcher, throw hard, do everything hard, Max Scherzer. Our thanks to Orlando Hudson, the Diamondbacks batting order brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Ryan Dempster. As a starter, this guy was the closer for the Chicago Cubs last year and did a, did a very good job. But he was only a two-pitch pitcher as a closer, a fastball and a slider. Lou Pinella says, I, I like what, what he brings to the mound as a starter because he can use all four of his pitches. He's got a curveball and a changeup as well. Brian Dempster off to a great start for these Cubs. Four and one. Tenth in the National League in earned run average at 2.72. Reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. 50-degree afternoon here in Chicago. Comes behind Ted Lilly. Defeated Dan Heron and the Diamondbacks yesterday 3-1. And now the first pitch from Dexter to former Cub Augie Ojeda. Ojeda starting for the injured Orlando Hudson had a career day on Fox last Saturday. Mark, you and I were there. Six RBIs. And a 10-4 victory over the New York Mets. Ojeda in for, as you said, the injured Orlando Hudson. Just hitting a cool 368 in his few starts. Ojeda nine for his last 20. Batting leadoff for the first time this season. And he sends this one down the left field line foul. So the count now one and two with Stephen Drew waiting on deck. A Cub from 2000 through 2003. Member of Team USA in the 96 Olympics out of the University of Tennessee. A one two from Dempster. Fastball missing inside two and two. A lot of times Ryan Dempster likes to come inside with the fastball to set up that sharp slider. Let's see if he goes with it here. The 2-2 to Ojeda on the ground to the right side. Derek Lee with the flip to Dempster covering one away. We take a look at the Cubs in the field. Lee DeRosa. Terrio and Ramirez around the infield. Soriano in left. Johnson in center. Luca Dome in right. And the National League Rookie of the Month for April. Giovanni Soto behind the plate. One of the few offensive catchers, Giovanni Soto. So with one away here, Stephen Drew. Drew working on a six-game hitting streak. Fouls off the first pitch from Dempster, nothing and one. Drew with a triple yesterday. Has three triples, Mark, in his last five games. And he sends this one into the left field corner. Foul, nothing and two. When the wind blows in here at Wrigley Field like it is today, a lot of balls just go straight to the stands that may stay fair in other ballparks. Always hated it when the wind blew in. Always. Wind was blowing in yesterday, yet Chris Young connected off Ted Lilly for a first inning home run. He did. Derek Lee hit one as well. Derek Lee just a the latest in a long line of power hitting first baseman here on the north side. There he is. 
Drew gets the bat on it, stays alive at one and two. We noticed a couple of Grace jerseys down in the stands <laughs> before the game today. And uh, you thought they were Mike Fontenot. Uh, I did, you know, Mike I only Grace saw the jerseys. number, not the name. Fontenot, of course, wears that number very proudly. I hope. One, two from Dempster, and Drew goes down on strikes. Four out number two. Our game comparison brought to you by Cars.com. Well, for Arizona, their phenom, Max Scherzer, hard thrower, but he's got to locate his fastball, Kenny. If he leaves it in the middle of the plate, he's going to get hard hit hard up at the big league level. In Chicago, for them, just they're 12 and 6 at home, so it's just sweet home Chicago. Cubs love playing in the friendly confines. Chris Young, we mentioned Homer to the first inning yesterday. Off Ted Lilly, his ninth of the year. He's driven in 20 runs. So it is a Mark Race jersey. Awfully, it is flattering to see that. If he was probably uh, a little smarter, he'd go with Derek Lee, wouldn't he? Perhaps. What a player Derek Lee is. He puts up triple crown type numbers every year. There's there's a little there's a guy a little more knowledgeable. And hungry. <laughs> two balls, two strikes on Young. By the way, Dempster's strikeout of Drew placed Ryan in sole possession of second place all time among Canadian born pitchers behind only Fergie Jenkins in strikeouts 1037 he had been tied with John Hiller and there is number 1038 as the Diamondbacks go down in order in the first Alfonso Soriano in left field Ryan Terrio in Shortstop, Derek Lee, first base, Aramis Ramirez, third base, Kosuke Fukudome, right field, Giovanni Soto, catching, Mark DeRosa, second base, Reed Johnson, center field, and the starting pitcher is Ryan Dempster. The Cubs batting order brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Our thanks to tomorrow's Cubs starter, Carlos Sambrano. As the Cubs get set to face 23-year-old right-hander Max Scherzer. Alfonso Soriano leading off for the Cubs and fouls the first pitch back to the screen. Strike one. That's what you're going to see a lot of from Max Scherzer. Fastballs. A below-average slider and, and, and really a, a, a below-average changeup. But one of the better fastballs you'll see. You know, one. We're going to miss by Soriano. Nothing in two. Soriano batting just 191. He doubled in yesterday's game, drove in a run. Cubs leadoff hitters as a group, batting just 195 this season. Always difficult to get off to a good start here in Chicago. Cold, wind blowing in a lot. Fastball high and tight. One and two with Ryan Terrio waiting on deck. A one two from Scherzer. Soriano pops it up to the right side. Ojeda moving to his left. Makes the catch for out number one as we check in for the first time today with Jeannie Zalasco in Los Angeles. Jeannie. All right, Jeannie, Tigers won last night's game over the Yankees. Yankees off to a quick start today. Kevin calling them out, huh? Only Kevin. Strike one to Ryan Terrio. Batting 321. 0 for 4 in yesterday's game. And that's what I was talking about, Kenny, when I'm saying Scherzer must locate. That was knee high. That was an unhittable fastball. Line 
drive caught by the first baseman, Connor Jackson, for out number two. Well, Max Scherzer began his major league career two weeks ago by coming on in relief in a game against Houston as we take another look off the bat of Terrio. You can see that ball was up around belt high. That's why it got hit so hard. Connor Jackson saving extra bases. So Derek Lee steps in. Homer in yesterday's game gave the Cubs an insurance run. Scherzer in his first major league appearance against Houston retired all 13 batters he faced out of the pen. Striking out seven of the 13. Nothing and two on Lee. So we take you back to April 29th. First pitcher to throw four to third perfect innings in his Major League debut in the history of Major League Baseball. As Lee goes down on three pitches for a one, two, three first for Max Scherzer. Think outside the bun by cars.com where confidence comes standard and by one a day men's the official multivitamin of major league baseball specially formulated to support prostate health middle of the order for the diamondbacks here in the second inning against ryan dempster who retired arizona in order in the first connor jackson leading off team leading 28 runs batted in this some time earlier this week after he was involved in a collision with the Philly Shane Victorino at first base on Wednesday. A violent collision. Both guys okay, though. What was the worst collision you were ever involved in on the receiving end while playing first base? Well, I, you know, I, I was nobody's dummy, Kenny. I just got out of the way in those situations. Yeah, let's, let's get a double play now. But uh, I, I hit Eric Karros pretty hard one time. We both... Uh, we both got to know each other pretty well. This is this is with Connor Jackson and Victorino. And a big collision at first. On Connor Jackson's 26th birthday, I might add. Happy birthday. Here's a concussion. He took Victorino's helmet right in the cheek. You know, I saw you and Eric going at it during our Fox seminar back in March. Right. I don't think either of you have gotten over it. <laughs> no, see, we hold grudges, me and Eric. Playoff pitch to Jackson. Shallow right field. Calling forward is the second baseman, DeRosa. One away. Well, Fox Sports has established Fox Sports Supports, a long-term charitable initiative devoted to raising awareness and financial assistance for health-related charities. Make-A-Wish Foundation, our baseball charity, grants 13,000 wishes a year to children with life-threatening medical conditions. To help make wishes come true and bring joy to kids, please visit wish.org. One away, here's the youngest player in the majors, Justin Upton. Not yet 21 years old. He's still putting up terrific numbers. 3.33, had a tough time yesterday, 0 for 4, and he struck out three times. And there's still going to be growing pains with Justin Upton. I mean, he just oozes talent. But still, sometimes makes 20-year-old mistakes. I don't care how old you are, you're not hitting that beautiful slider there from Dempster. Upton will turn 21 in late August. Youngest player in Major League Baseball, the 1-2. That's the missing low. Two balls, two strikes. You look down this Diamondbacks roster. Drew is 25, Young 24, Upton 20, Reynolds 24. On the ground to the third baseman, Ramirez. Fires across, and Upton is retired. Diamondbacks, of course, Won their division last year. Beat the Cubs. Swept the Cubs yeah, yeah. in the NLDS. Lost to Colorado. Off to a great start for Bob Melvin this season. A record of 23 
and 13 best record in Major League Baseball and if you if you go around the country Kenny and, and you'll you'll talk to uh, fans for other teams by and large you can't find many people that can name three Diamondbacks other than Randy Johnson you, you really can't these guys have just flown under the radar now for a couple of years They're kind of the best player nobody knows about Randy will start tomorrow against Carlos Sambrano. 2-0 on Mark Reynolds. Randy Johnson has never, never lost to the Chicago Cubs. That's right. 12-0, including 4-0 in five starts here at Wrigley Field. He couldn't have done it without me. <laughs> I think I was one for 13 lifetime off that big rascal. He was no fun from the left side. You weren't much better against Ryan Dempster. That's two no, for 12. You're right. He owned me. Reynolds draws a walk. Diamondbacks have their first base runner. Well, for the first time, a pitcher has to pitch out of the stretch today. Chris Snyder at the plate, the Diamondbacks catcher. Snyder has been sizzling, 10 for his last 20. Batting over 500 during the month of May. So Reynolds takes his lead off first and Dempster throws over. Reynolds with four steals this year and four attempts. Yeah, Reynolds is one of those guys, if you if you don't pay attention to him, he'll just take off. That's a pretty good lead he's got right there. Fastball missing away. Snyder's numbers by month. And now Soto out for a chat. Well, as after Dempster has thrown six consecutive balls. Exactly, after two quick outs. They start to jump around on Dempster. Lou Pinella very pleased with Dempster so far this season. He feels Zambrano and Dempster have been the Cubs two best starters with Ted Lilly coming on pitched very well yesterday yeah, Ted Lilly got out of the gate slowly, but now he's really right the ship through a beautiful ball game here yesterday afternoon for a win struck out 10 Diamondbacks That also Helped himself at the plate. How about that drove in the tying run Two and two on Snyder well, whatever Soto told him out on the mound was back to back beautiful fastballs in the outside corner. Diamondbacks walked Reed Johnson yesterday to pitch to Lilly. And it paid off for the Cubs. 2 2. And Snyder fouls it off to the left side. Well, that's a great weapon if you're a, if you're a pitcher that can handle the bat a little bit. It's not just getting base hits. I mean, get the bunts down, do the things to help help your club offensively. And then when you drive in runs, especially with two outs like Lilly did yesterday, those are just backbreakers for an opponent. Base hit into center field for Snyder. Reynolds holding it second. So after Dempster retired the first two Diamondbacks here in the second, he walked Reynolds. And now Snyder with the first hit of the game. Well, just a bouncing ball. They had a big shift on for Snyder. Terrio was playing him way over on the left side of the diamond. Usually that ball is right to the shortstop, but the shift cost him. And it's first and second with two outs. So here's left fielder Jeff Salazar. Eric Burns has the day off today. And Salazar falls behind nothing and one. Salazar making his sixth start of the season, his third start in left field. And his eight for his last 20 at the plate. Now you just, Bob Melvin's got such a deep bench. Any Anytime injuries happen, he can go to a quality player. Salazar, a guy that never met a fastball he couldn't hit. Loves to hit the fastball. The off-speed gives him some trouble sometimes. But he doesn't care how hard you throw it. 27 years of age out of Oklahoma State. First and second, two outs, top of the second inning here in Chicago. Oh. 
Dempster missing away. Two and one. Starting to pile up a little bit here in the second inning on Dempsey. It's number 40. Oh, he threw a 15 of the first, now 25. Here in a second inning in which he retired the first two batters he faced. Luke Pinello, and there's pitching coach Larry Rothschild. Luke Pinello feels that Dempster has built up his stamina. He can throw 115, 120 pitches in a game after spending the last three years in the Cubs' bullpen. Ball strike on the outside corner, and the count is full. Diamondback runners will get a running start on this 3-2 pitch with two outs. That was a perfectly placed fastball right there from Dempster. Diamondbacks marked yesterday with men on base, 0 for 7, with six strikeouts. He used to say that's why they only scored one run. They all pitch him, Salazar. Is down on strikes. Third strikeout for Dempster. The Diamondbacks strand two in the second. Budweiser reached for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. Bottom of the second inning here at Wrigley. Kenny Albert, Mark Grace. Max Scherzer retired the Cubs in order in the first. Ramos Ramirez swings and misses at strike one. Middle of the order for the Cubs. Ramirez, Fukudome, and Soto. Early test here for the youngster. Yo one and Ramirez with the first base hit of the game for the Cubs. It rolls all the way to the wall. And Aramis Ramirez is in with a stand-up double. Well, Scherzer will learn an early lesson there from the veteran Ramirez. You throw a fastball by him, and then you hang a slider right in the middle of the plate. Aramis Ramirez has made an awfully good living hammering mistakes like that. So with the runner on second, here is Kosuke Fukudome, who is sizzling here at home, batting 443 at Wrigley. 320 overall. Squares to butt. Makes a call strike, nothing and one. Fukudome only one home run so far this year. Hit a lot of home runs in Japan. One home run came on opening day against Eric Gagne. He became an instant cult hero here in Chicago. That's that. Fastball missing away. One and one. Only Lance Berkman and Chipper Jones have higher batting averages at home this season in the National League. Have you seen what Lance Berkman's been doing? Wow. 18 for his last 24. This will move the runner over. As Fukudome grounds out to the shortstop, Drew Ramirez to third. So with one away here in the Cubs second, we check in once again with Jeannie. Mets with a six-run lead in the first of two as they were rained out last night. Here's Giovanni Soto, who mentioned earlier, named yesterday as the National League Rookie of the Month for April. He led all rookies with five home runs, 20 runs batted in during the first month of the season. up there the Diamondbacks are going to concede the run you can see the infielders all playing back any ground ball will make it a one nothing Cub lead one 
and one from Scherzer. Fastball missing inside. Two and one. You can see Scherzer now needing the strikeout. Up that fastball up to 96 miles an hour. Two and two. The Burger King hot zone for Giovanni Soto. He likes it just about everywhere, doesn't he, Kenny? Off to a sizzling start. He was the most valuable player in the Pacific Coast League last season. His eighth year in the Cubs organization. Four count. Scherzer tried to take a bite out of that outside corner and just missed. Mark Larosa waiting on deck. First full count for Scherzer this afternoon. Runner on third, one out. They all pitch to Soto. On the ground to the right side, the throw home, the tag, and Ramirez is out at the plate. Boy, Lamas Ramirez, for some reason, he was not running right away. He must have thought that was going to be a line drive to Augie Ojeda. And he got a terrible jump at third base, and Augie Ojeda all the way from the outfield grass. Throws him out at the plate. What a great play by Ojeda. What a heads-up play. And watch, watch Ramirez. Ball's hit. Oh, well, I'm going to stay. Well, he didn't take off until the ball was almost in Ojeda's glove, and he was a dead duck at the plate. So with two away, here's Mark DeRosa. Takes the fastball inside for ball one. Ramirez led off the inning with a double. Moved to third on the Fukudome ground out. And was thrown out of the plate, and the ball hit to the right side by Soto. DeRosa, right field. Upton is under it. And the Cubs are retired in the second. We'll return to Chicago after a word from your local Fox station. Scherzer leading off for the Diamondbacks here in the third against Ryan Dempster. Scherzer 0 for 3 at the plate during his short Major League career. Grew up in the St. Louis area. Four hours from Chicago. He has over 20 friends and family members here at Wrigley today. And Mark, you were telling me that as a youngster, he, he grew up a huge Cardinal fan. And he loathed the Chicago Cubs and uh, and was not a big fan of mine. I came to find that out. So we've had some conversations about it. We patched it up. Has he gotten over it yet? No. Scherzer appearing in his fourth major league game. He's once out of the pen. This is second start. And he also pinch ran. Yes, he did. He's a good athlete. Handles the bat pretty well. I mean, he's not going to tear it up by any means with the bat, but he's got an idea. He's a pretty good athlete. And he, he runs very well, as a matter of fact. I wouldn't know anything about that. Stays alive. Full count. I think a lot of times, Kenny, pitchers, even veterans like Dempster, they get ahead 0-2, and then they start trying to strike you out rather than just get you out. You can see that he, he got ahead 0-2 and then started nitpicking a little bit, started trying to get him to chase sliders away when really all he needed to do is just put a little sink on it and get a ground ball early. Right back to the box. Dempster to lead one away. Well, each week leading up to the All-Star Game, Fox will be counting down Yankee Stadium's greatest baseball moments presented by Bank of America. September of 1927, Babe Ruth swatted his 60th home run of the season, breaking his previous record of 59 set in 1921. To vote for your favorite moment, log on to foxsports.com. Keyword moments. The most popular moment will be revealed at the All-Star Game July 15th on Fox. 
Diamondbacks. And how about Micah Owens' career numbers at the plate? The Diamondbacks starting pitcher. Those slugging numbers. That's pretty good company he's up there with, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Micah now, scheduled to start on Tuesday. Has a 4-1 and one record this year. And also hit a pinch hit home run a week and a half ago. Micah Owens, he's... He's a very good athlete as well. How about taking a slider out of the ballpark to the opposite field? Pitchers aren't supposed to be able to do that, Kenny. How about the Astros making a pitching change after Owens was announced as the pinch hitter? Brought in the right-hander, and the first pitch he saw, bang! Augie Ojeda at the plate, grounded out to Lee his first time up, and also made a terrific throw to catch Aramis Ramirez at the plate in the last half inning oh. and now he takes one right in the, in the back. back right on the numbers and like a pro's pro just go right to first don't need to give the pitcher the hairy eyeball there he wasn't trying to hit him but boy he got him pretty rock solid right above the belt ouch you know, getting back to Babe Ruth for a moment we had a look at his 60th home run he hit one of his most memorable home runs in this ballpark back in 1932. The called shot. The famous called shot. There's still some, some old timers here in Chicago that some swear, no, it didn't happen. And some swear, oh, yes, he did. He called it. What did you think from your first base position? Well, when, as he trotted by me, I, 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 I kind of gave him the business a little bit. But you didn't high five him like McGuire? <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a, a fun time too, being able to be part of that. Yeah, I gave I gave McGuire some love as he went by. But not not the babe, huh? No, the babe. I was uh, I was uh, very upset. That was a big home run. You know, that's. And cost you, was, us you were younger. Series. You were younger at the time. Exactly. I was a young player, and I, I just called him Mr. Root. Not George Herman. <laughs> one and one. The count on Drew. Ojeda takes his lead off first, one out. Top of the third inning from Wrigley. Augie Ojeda has certainly filled in admirably for the injured Orlando Hudson. And one thing you're always going to get from Ojeda is great defense. Right field, Fukudome. Two out. Well, the sun started to peak out here at Wrigley Field. And right field here at Wrigley is one of the worst sun fields in all of baseball. It's been an overcast day most of the day, but the sun peaked its head out at an inopportune time for Fukudome. I got it. I got it. Whoa, wait a minute. I'm not so sure anymore. Ended up making a nice play. This is your first trip to Wrigley this season. What do you think of the field renovations here? I think they did a great job. They needed to. This uh, the, the playing surface here was was getting to the point where guys were getting hurt. It was a, a, a bad place to play as far as the playing surface was concerned. But now they did the right thing, re renovated. Now it's fabulous. Chris Young struck out his first time up. Originally drafted by the White Sox back in 2001, involved in the El Duque Javier Vasquez deal. and two on Young. And Young strikes out for the second time. Ojeda stranded on first, middle of the third. No score.
What is that? Okay. Bottom of the third inning here at Wrigley. No score as Reed Johnson leads off for the Cubs against Max Scherzer. Takes strike one. Johnson spent the last five seasons with the Toronto Blue Jays. Batting 260 as a Cub. He was intentionally walked yesterday. And then the Diamondbacks pitched to Ted Lilly. Who tied the game and one with a base hit. Cost him dearly. I've, I've always been a Reed Johnson fan. He's a tough out. He gives you a good at bat every single time he gets in the box. He's tough to strike out. He took a bullet right across the kneecaps there. And he was a gymnast as a youngster. Really? Athletic. Max Scherzer says, I don't care how tough you are to strike out. Here's a fastball right by you. I don't care if you can tiptoe across the balance beam. Yeah. He got, uh, he got a, got, had trouble on the rings. So Johnson. He is strikeout victim number two. As Ryan Dempster steps in. Talk a little bit about the field renovations, the new drainage system. No more crown. No more crown. You know, all the old ballparks in Boston comes to my Yan old Yankee Stadium, uh, old Comiskey Park. All the older ballparks were built with a crown to help uh, to help drainage during the during the rainy seasons. And it's it's not used anymore that technique. But Wrigley Field was one of them. But they completely revamped this this playing surface and they leveled it they flattened it Kenny 14 inches Wow! I remember when, when I was sitting in the third base dugout you couldn't even see the right field because the because of that crown situation now you now you when you sit in the dugout you see everything perfect Dempster down on strikes two up two down two strikeouts for Scherzer here in the third you would know as well as anyone but apparently when you were at the plate here at Wrigley Field, you could not see the legs of the center fielder. That's exactly right. And and it was also so crowned, a lot of times uh, players would come roaring around third base, and because of the tilt, they would they would fall. And uh, it, it was a dangerous situation. Do you speak from experience on yes. that one? Yes, I, uh, I went head over heels a few times. Soriano on the first pitch. It drops in front of the diving Upton. Soriano with the Cubs second hit of the game. Soriano will take anything he can get right now. Came into the game hitting 191. Gets jammed there by a Scherzer fastball. Look at the effort from the 20-year-old Upton. But he comes up short. And Soriano, a terrific base stealer. Might be off to the races here and try to get in scoring position with two outs. He's three for three on the base pads this season. Stole 41 bases two years ago. Ryan Terrio at the plate, lined down to the first baseman Jackson. Back in the first inning. Tilling towards second as Terrio takes ball one. We are scoreless, bottom of the third inning here at Wrigley. Cubs had a runner thrown out of the plate, attempting to score on a ground ball to the right side in the second inning as Soriano slides back in. Cubs with a record of 20 and 15. One game behind the St. Louis Cardinals in the National League Central. I guess you'd have to say the surprising St. Louis Cardinals, wouldn't you? Cardinals off to a great start. Cubs won a franchise record 17 games during the month of April. Cubs started the season 15 and 6. They've done just 5 and 9 since then.
Cubs won the division in Lou's first season in Chicago last year. Before they were swept by the Diamondbacks. Cubs hit only 194 during that three-game series. They scored just six runs. Two for 23 with runners in scoring position. Hit into a lot of double plays. And the young, very athletic Diamondbacks took it to them. They're holding the ball a long time with Soriano over there. And a base hit into right field. Soriano heading to third. Upton had some trouble with it. And now Soriano heading home. Here's the throw to the plate. And he is safe. Oh, Chris Snyder is not happy with the call by Dana DeMute. I don't know what Justin Upton was, was doing out there. He just kind of lobbed the ball in after kicking it around. And Soriano just kept coming. You see, there's the base hit. He's going to third now. Upton boots it. And then just kind of holds on to the ball, holds on, and then lobs it in there. And Soriano heads up base running. Well, I don't know. Oh, he dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. Absolutely. That's a good call by Dana DeMuth. And this is a great base running play by Soriano, but all you kids at home, don't go into home plate head first if you can help it. That is a good way for a catcher to just bury you. It's a good way to break fingers. Those shin guards will come right down on top of you. Be very careful. If you can at home plate, go in feet first, folks, because catchers are just put a hurting on you. You can see the the stop sign right there. Stay right there. Oh, well, okay, go. If Snyder can hang on to the ball, it would have been another great throw to the plate from Augie Ojeda. So an error charge to Upton. Soriano scoring on the error. No run batted in for Terrio. So the Cubs, who had Ramirez thrown out of the plate in the second inning, take a 1-0 lead here in the third. And those are some of the things you're going to have to live with when you have a 20-year-old out in right field. The talent is, is just beyond belief. And you get a lot of mistakes just like that, just holding the ball out there instead of getting it back into the infield quickly. And a veteran speedy base runner like Soriano took full advantage. Fourth error charged to Upton this season. Terrio goes. Here's the throw from Snyder. And Terrio is out at second. Caught stealing for a league leading seventh time this season. But the Cubs take a 1 0 lead after three. By the new AT&T, your world delivered. And by Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. Kenny Albert, Mark Grace, back in Chicago, top of the fourth inning. With the Cubs leading the Diamondbacks, 1-0. As Connor Jackson takes a call, strike nothing and one. Jackson popped out to the second baseman, DeRosa, his first time up. He drills this one foul down the left field line. Nothing in two. Yeah, that'll sting your hands. Get out of the way of those. That was a rocket. Yeah. Bring your glove. Ouch. Jackson, Upton, and Reynolds for the Diamondbacks here in the fourth against Ryan Dempster. For his fifth win of the season. Dempster's last start mark, his first loss Monday in Cincinnati, did not allow an earned run. The Reds scored five unearned runs in that game following two Cubs errors. Not much you can do when the fellows behind you aren't making the plays. Moving to his right, Terrio, long throw across, and Jackson is retired. We spoke moments ago with Cubs manager Lou Pinella. 
And we asked Lou about the heads up base running in the last half inning by Alfonso Soriano. Well, when Upton uh, fumbled the ball in uh, right field, uh, uh, Soriano made a, a dash for home plate, and there was a good relay throw, but the catcher dropped the ball. Good aggressive baseball with two outs. Oh, Ryan Dempster, he's been a, a pleasant surprise for you in the starting rotation this year. He sure has. Uh, he came to spring training uh, with the eye of, uh, of the Tiger. He wanted to start, and that was his ambition, and uh, he was in great shape. He threw the ball well from day one, and truthfully, he's been... Uh, our second best starter all year uh, really really pitched well and we're pleased with him. Lose 17 wins in April. You're only a game out of the division. Are you pleased with how things have gone so far overall? Well they've gone fairly well. Uh, we've had one major disappointment. That was uh, Hill. Uh, we had to send him out. Hopefully we'll get him back soon. Uh, we need him in the rotation. Another lefty but uh, you know all in all we're healthy. We're playing okay and uh, I think we'll get better as the season progresses. We miss you up here in the booth. Thanks Lou. Good Thanks, luck fellas. Skipper. Thank you. Lou, a former colleague of ours at Fox Sports, and he was referring to Rich Hill, who is pitching right. now in Triple A. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of talent in Rich Hill. It just didn't happen for him early. He's going to have to go get right down to Triple A. The Cubs skipped Jason Marquis during this turn through the rotation. Marquis scheduled to start Monday against San Diego, and then John Lieber on Tuesday for the Cubs. On one hop, nice play by Terrio, and he throws out Upton. What a play by the shortstop, Terrio. Well, that was a gorgeous play there by the man they called the Riot. I mean, a bullet off the bat of Justin Upton, snared on a hop, and a rifle right on the button to Derek Lee. That's good stuff. So with two outs, Mark Reynolds steps in. As we take one more look. That gets better and better every time you see it. Now Dempster in the second inning retired Jackson and Upton as he has done here in the fourth. But in the second ran into some trouble when he walked Reynolds. And then allowed the base hit to Snyder. But this time Reynolds will not reach as he grounds out to Ramirez. Middle of the fourth. one nothing comes. For Derek Lee here in the fourth. Lee was at the plate in the bottom of the third inning when Ryan Terrio was caught stealing. Oh. Derek Lee struck out back in the first inning. The Burger King hot zone for Mr. Lee. And this guy's just such a tremendous hitter. I'm surprised there's actually places that he can be pitched. Even Broken when he breaks his bat, he gets a base hit. Broken bat. Base hit into right field, a leadoff single for Derek Lee. We chatted between innings with Diamondback skipper Bob Melvin, and we asked Bob for his thoughts on Max Scherzer's performance so far this afternoon. Well, you know, he's, he's got command of his breaking ball. He's getting ahead, and that's kind of the key for him. First time out, he was doing that. Got a lot of strikeouts, got a lot of bad swings. Next time out, wasn't as efficient early on in getting strikes, and uh, today he is so far. What was your take on that... Uh Wacky play that uh, the Cubs scored the run on. Well, we just got to get in a little quicker. You got to know who's running and, and potentially in a game like this, if you're going to take some chances or not. He bobbled it out there, and, you know, the next step is get it in as quickly as you can. I think if the ball gets there and, uh, you, you know, in the air, I think we still got a chance to get him at the plate. I think it just short hopped him. From my angle, I couldn't really tell, but it, it, I, it came out of his glove apparently. Bob, what do you hope to have Orlando Hudson back in the starting lineup? Well, he probably could have played today. We'll see what the weather's like tomorrow. I mean, if it's real cold and real bad, I'd probably keep him out. But, uh, you know, he, he's good to go. He's good to pinch hit today. And if things are okay tomorrow, he may be in there tomorrow. Thanks, Bob. Best of luck. All good right. luck. Thank you. And look at Orlando Gold Hudson. Love winner, Orlando Hudson. It, it just kills him to have to sit on the bench. He wants to play every inning of every game. Out with the straight right hamstring. Ramirez awaiting the 0-2 from Scherzer. Fastball missing high and away. One ball, two strikes. Ramirez doubled in the second inning. Moved to third on a ground out. And then tried to score on a ground ball to the right side, but was thrown out by the second baseman, Augie Ojeda. 
Short lead off first for Derek Lee. The one two to Ramirez. And he pops it up. Shallow right. Calling for it is the second baseman Ojeda. He makes the catch. One away. Here in the Cubs fourth as we check in with Jeannie. Cardinals with a one-game lead on the Cubs. I thought that was referring to me. Uh, it had to be. That, that surprised me that it's actually about uh, Pujols. It's not, huh? It's, it's shameful. Here's Fukudome who grounded out to short. His first time up. Cubs lead 1-0. Max Scherzer in his second Major League start. Started four games for AAA Tucson earlier this season. Struck out 38. Walked only three in those four minor league starts. And he was certainly a strike thrower. When you've got the stuff he's got, and you can command it, Throw it over the plate consistently. I mean, it, it's stardom in the future for, for this young man. Big 12 pitcher of the year back in 2005, pitching for the University of Missouri. First round pick, 11th overall by the Diamondbacks in last year's draft. He will turn 24 in late July. Behind 3 0 to Fukudome. Walks him on four pitches. First walk today, issued by Scherzer. Only his third in the big leagues to go along with 15 strikeouts. Yeah, we were talking about what a strike thrower he is. Just barely missing with about four straight fastballs. That's a lot of, a lot of heat coming your way if you're a hitter. 99 goodness first and second Soto fouls back the first pitch from Scherzer nothing and one Ball missing away. His fastball, you know, you, you see him in the mid 90s, Kenny, but he's not a really maximum effort guy by, by, it's pretty smooth. He just drops and drives right towards the catcher. He's not flying all over the place. His mechanics are pretty sound. And that's what Bob Melvin told me before the game. I asked him about Scherzer. He said he has an easy motion, easy delivery, and then boom, and it's on you. A lot like Kerry Wood and the fact that a fastball gets halfway there and then it's got that something kicks it right at the end and it's by most hitters. Missing inside to Soto, two and one. Two on, one out. Lee on second. Fukudome on at first. You can see, watch the back leg drop and drive. That's not a maximum effort. That's pretty sound mechanically right there. Two-one, and Soto lifts this one. The center, the catch is made by Young for out number two. Well, next week on Fox Saturday Baseball, interleague play gets into full swing as the Brewers head to Fenway Park to take on the Red Sox. Some of you will see the Dodgers and the Angels or the Indians and the Reds. The Fox Saturday Baseball Game of the Week next week at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, and high definition only on Fox. Check local listings for the game in your area. You an interleague fan? I don't mind it. I am a traditionalist, but I don't Me mind too. interleague play. 
it's starting to grow on me a little bit, but I still think there's there's ways. I still don't know why in the American League there's the DH rule and in the National League there's not. I think if you get an, a universal set of rules, either have both leagues have it or, or what I want to do is get rid of it. Then I think uh, then I think it would it would be better. Diamondbacks, the team that you follow day in day out, certainly don't mind having the pitchers hit. Exactly. Well, you got somebody like Mike Owings. Is this 97 mile an hour fastball coming right at DeRosa? Get out of the way, son. But there's a lot of American League teams that you know their pitchers never take batting practice. They never work on their bunting, and I think that's a big disadvantage when they go to the National League parks. Look at Ted Lilly spent so many years in right. the American League. Big base hit yesterday for the yeah. Cubs. Carlos Zambrano has 13 career home runs. And then there's also there's American League teams that take a couple of guys. You know, when they pick their team to to start the season, they take a couple of guys that are going to be DHs. Whereas the National League, some guys have to use backup infielders as DHs because they they don't have them in their organization. Feel that the DH did extend the careers of some of your peers? Oh, without question. Guys like Edgar Martinez, one of the best ever. Uh, Chili Davis, a very good friend of mine. He didn't even own a glove. <laughs> one of the greatest ever played here for a lot of years, Harold Baines. Yeah. Two and two now on DeRosa. Here it is. What's my name? Max Scherzer. Well, it's a, I like that. Just power on power. DeRosa, a big swing at the big Scherzer fastball. Ball for the right side. Diamondbacks featured in this week's edition of Sports Illustrated. Full page photo of the rookie right hander. Well, you know you've arrived when you're already getting Sports Illustrated after one outing. A 2 2 and DeRosa. Is down on strikes on the 93 mile per hour fastball. Fourth strikeout for Scherzer. Chris Snyder leading off for the Diamondbacks here in the fifth. He has Arizona's only hit today. A two out single back in the second inning. Diamondbacks coming into play today, the highest scoring team in baseball. Cubs are second. But the Diamondbacks, Mark, have not scored a run since the first inning of yesterday's game. They've gone 12 consecutive innings without a run. Yeah, certainly chilly weather here in Chicago. And the Diamondback bats certainly in the deep freeze as well here. Cub pitching just chewing them up. Yesterday, in fact, First time all season in 36 games that the Diamondbacks scored fewer than two runs in one game. Ryan Dempster's just been on top of his game. Only a, a ball or two hit hard all day. Lou Pinella said before the game, Dempster in spring training was on a mission, really wanted to be part of this Cubs rotation. Check swing. And Snyder becomes strikeout victim number five. That's the glove of Ryan Dempster. It's kind of a strange way to go about it, but whatever he's doing, he's doing it awfully well. Four and one coming into the season. Would that distract you at all as a hitter? Eh, probably not. Uh, it's distracting me as a broadcaster. What about you? <laughs> Yeah, it, it kind of is a bit odd. It, it kind of makes you want to watch it. 
Well, you were telling me earlier that Dempster is a magician, perhaps he is. just trying to he is a, he is a, hide a, the ball a, even more than he normally would. Yeah, he's an accomplished magician. Slide of hand. Yeah, maybe. Well, he's certainly making the baseball disappear to the Diamondback hitters. One and one on Salazar, who struck out back in the second inning. Dempster has received tremendous run support this season. It's only one nothing so far today. But this year, as Salazar falls behind one and two, the Dempster starts. The Cubs have scored six, six, nine, thirteen, three, nineteen, Goodness. and three. See, so the three that stand out, 9, 13, and 19. 19. And this is only his eighth start. Oh, Just yeah. missing away. Oh, he wanted that one. He thought he shaved the outside corner with that fastball. Dan DeMuth, the home plate umpire, wasn't in the giving mood. What do you think at home? Strike or ball? I think Jeff Salazar got a break. And now the 2-2 from Dempster. Foul back. Best Christmas gift he received, a Flintstones bowling set. <laughs> He's a funny guy. Grew up in British Columbia, north of the border. As a 10-minute comic act, I, I bet he can go more than 10 minutes if he needs to. First job was delivering newspapers. What was your first job? My, believe it or not, my first job, I worked at a batting cage back when... I had to collect all the balls and dump them into the machine. And then I was also a vendor at what used to be uh, Anaheim Stadium. Really? Yeah. Hot dogs and frozen malts and that kind of stuff. Salazar down on strikes. Strikeout number six for Ryan Dempster. We take you back to Dempster three years ago. One more thing before I go. I just wanted to pass along a quick hello to Ryan Sandberg. And congratulations for getting into the Hall of Fame. I tell you, one of the best second basemen I ever seen play when I was in Chicago. The guy was incredible. Made every play. Went like something like 7,000 games without making a throwing error. It was amazing. Never overthrew anybody. You tell Nano, hit him in the chest. And he would. It was tremendous. Not too many ball players like him anymore. Let's get some runs. Go Cubs. So he could do a 10-minute magic act and follow it up with about 20 minutes of Harry. I think he needs to work on his Harry a little bit. What do you think? Well, that was three years ago. That's I think true. He, I, I think he's improved. I, I, I'm sure he has. We'll have to. We'll have to see. I'm surprised that WGN reached British Columbia back in the <laughs> late 70s, early 80s. He's making it look easy this afternoon. He strikes out the side in the fifth. Early baseball is sponsored by Chevy and American Revolution. Hey, hey, here we are back at Wrigley. Bottom of the fifth inning. Cubs lead the Diamondbacks. 1-0. Cubs scored their run in the third. And now Reed Johnson leading off against Max Scherzer. And takes ball one. Cubs with a run on four hits. You had four hits. One of each kind. 15 years ago yesterday. Right here at Wrigley Field. A lot of people wonder how the heck I got a triple. Anybody else would have certainly circled him. I had to dive into third after two. You did not hit the home run. I did and had to be carried off. And then you did not hit the home run until that two outs the, in the ninth. That was the last at bat. Completing the cycle, May 9th, 1993, against the San Diego Padres. And that was a once in a lifetime, obviously, because I only did it once. But, you know, but the, the lousy part about it, and it was wow. so that one drills Reed Johnson. Reed Johnson. Hit by a pitch for the seventh time 
this season. In fact, since 2003, only Jason Kendall has been hit by more pitches than Reed Johnson. That's a slider that just stays right there and punks him on the front arm. He'll be just fine. But the, I was going to tell you the crummy thing about that day, uh, the, the cycle day thing, we lost the game. So there wasn't much to get excited about, as you see. The bruise leaders. So now Dempster steps in, struck out back in the third inning. Squares to punt. In those 15 years, Mark, since your cycle, there has been only one player in the last 15 years who completed a cycle as you did by hitting a home run with two outs really? in the ninth inning. I did not know that. Who Luis Gonzalez. Gonzo did it. Yep. Back in 2000 with the Diamondbacks. Gonzo was a team teammate of mine here in Chicago. He was a teammate of mine as well in Arizona. Here we go, May 9th, 1993. There's the double. There's the single. Uh-oh, not a triple. See, anybody else would have circled it. And there's the butt. <laughs> and there's the final home run. Now, obviously, when you step to the plate in the ninth, you knew that you needed only a home run for the cycle. I, I honestly, Kenny, and I mean it when I say I had no idea really? until I got into the dugout. One of my teammates informed me, Grace, you know you just hit for the cycle? I'm like, no, I didn't. But we're, we're still down a run. Dempster sacrifices Johnson over to second. So the Cubs with a man in scoring position with one out. Our game summary brought to you by Nextel Productivity. The numbers for both starting pitchers. Ryan Dempster has allowed only one hit through five. He has struck out seven. Alfonso Soriano has scored the game's only run. Yeah, I was a former position player, offensive player. Kenny, I love a good pitcher's duel, though. I think that is – pitcher's duels are great for baseball. We're smack dab in the middle of one here this afternoon. Here's Soriano, who singled and scored back in the third. That's just a high fastball. Nobody's going to catch up to 93 miles an hour up there. Soriano has seen seven pitches today, Mark. He's swung at six of them. <laughs> He's not up there to walk. Swings at seven out of eight, and it drops in. Soriano with his second hit of the day. Johnson moves to third. Cubs have runners on the corners. Now he's going to the well with that bloop to right field. Back-to-back at-bats now for base hits. Gets jammed again with the Scherzer fastball. You can see right off the pine tar there on his bat. But he hits it in a perfect spot. Mojeda gives it every ounce he's got. Here come the Cubs again. First and third for Ryan Terrio. Terrio singled back in the third inning. And was caught attempting to steal second to end the inning. Diamondbacks, no runs, only one base hit. Cubs, one run on five hits. Johnson, the runner on third. Soriano over at first. Scherzer steps off. That play always works, Kenny. That's the first time I've seen that play not work in a long time. Well, you mentioned that a couple of times last Saturday as well. Cardinals lead the Brewers 3-0 in the sixth. As Terrio is grazed by that pitch, and the Cubs have loaded the bases. Those are a couple of off-speed pitches that have gotten away from Scherzer. One a slider to hit Reed Johnson. Now a changeup hits Terrio. That well, might have been another slider. Got him on the jersey. I guess if you're going to get plunked, get plunked like that. 
for a visit Price. from Lou Pinella's former pitching coach in Seattle, Brian Price. So Derek Lee with the bases loaded, and the Cubs are certainly used to having this situation, Mark. Cubs had a stretch that just ended this week. The Cubs had at least one batter come to the plate with the bases loaded in 16 consecutive games. My goodness. It matched the longest streak in baseball over the last 35 years. The Mariners back in 2002 also had 16 consecutive games with at least one at bat with the bases loaded. Bases loaded, one out for Derek Lee. And your best hitter at the plate in Derek Lee, a chance for the Cubs to bust this thing open. Lee on the first pitch. Right field, Upton. Johnson to the plate. The throw from Upton is wow. in time, and Johnson is tagged out. What a rocket from the 20-year-old Justin Upton. And that is just waiting on Reed Johnson. Sprint. Get more done with Nextel Direct Connect only on the Now Network. By beautiful, durable Valspar paint. Valspar, the beauty goes on. And by Avodun. Top of the order for the Diamondbacks here in the sixth. They trail the Cubs 1 0. What a throw by Justin Upton to nail Reed Johnson at the plate. Liner over the glove of the shortstop Terrio into left center. So Ojeda has the Diamondbacks' second hit of the game. Let's take a look at the great throw from Justin Upton. Bases loaded, one out, Derek Lee, and in one pitch, out of the inning. Those are the kind of turning point plays, Kenny, that that can really change momentum. All the momentum was in the Cubs' dugout. The fans were on their feet for their star, Derek Lee, and then boom, nothing. And sure enough, Augie Ojeda leads off with a base hit, and here come the D-backs. So despite hitting two batters, watching the Cubs load the bases, Scherzer in the fifth inning threw only 10 pitches. That's hard to do, face five batters and load the bases, yet you only threw 10 pitches. He hit Johnson, Dempster, with a sacrifice, moving Johnson to second. Soriano singled. Scherzer hit Terrio. And then Derek Lee, bases loaded, one out, one swing, double play. Drew went around, one and one. Diamondbacks, as we mentioned, scored their only run yesterday in the first inning on the young home run. They have now gone 13 innings without having scored a run. Their season high is 16 scoreless innings. And the Diamondbacks, even though they're, but they they are going to strike out. They strike. They've got seven guys in their everyday lineup that are going to strike out at least 100 times. And and Bob Melvin just knows he's going to have to live with the strikeouts. Oh. But they also one through eight. They can hit the ball in the seats about 15 or more times, each and every one of them. Solo home run by Chris Young yesterday in the first inning, and that has been it here at Wrigley Field for the Diamondback offense. A 2-1 ripped foul by Drew. 2-2, two two. Dempster has already tied his season high with seven strikeouts today. He struck out the side in the fifth inning. Has allowed only two base hits. He's beaten the Diamondbacks only once in his career. That was back in 2000. A 10-1 victory as a member of the Marlins over Kurt Schilling and the Diamondbacks that day. Second hit of the inning for the Diamondbacks as Drew singles to left field and the Diamondbacks now have runners on first and second with nobody out. Well, the Cubs have certainly had their chances to score runs. This is back in the second inning. Aramis Ramirez 
out at the plate. Soriano scores the only run of the game at the third as Snyder could not hold on to the baseball. And then in the fifth, the throw from Upton. Reed Johnson tagged out. So three plays at the plate. And the Cubs are just one for three. Now we've had some action at the dish today, haven't we? And look at this momentum now. All from that one bullet of a throw from Justin Upton. Chris Young at the plate. He has struck out twice today. I would almost think if I'm Bob Melvin, yeah, this is your kid with nine home runs, and he hit 32 of them last year. I might even think about bunting right here. Try to move the runners up for Connor Jackson. Young takes. Ball one. And I only say that, Kenny, because Chris Young has struck out a couple of times today. He's obviously not picking up the ball very well from Ryan Dempster. He's third in the league in strikeouts. Four. 44 on the season. Three Diamondbacks in the top five. Well, they're going to strike out. Pops this one up. Under it is the shortstop Terrio for out number one. Our in game box score for the Diamondbacks brought to you by Abo Dart. Three hits, two have come in this inning. It's not much. Yeah, pretty quiet. And Bob Melvin disdains the bunt. Chris Young can't move the runners up. Now it's going to be up to Connor Jackson. It takes a base hit to score now instead of maybe a sack fly or an RBI ground out. Jackson 0 for 2 today. Diamondbacks first in the league in runs scored. Four pin hits. First in extra base hits. Fifth in batting average. But their bats have been quiet the last two days against Ted Lilly and now Ryan Dempster. And tomorrow they must face Carlos Sambrano, who's been one of the best pitchers in the National League this season. Bob Howry is up and throwing in the Cubs pen. This will be a great duel again tomorrow here. Big Carlos Sambrano against big Randy Johnson. Soto out for a chat with Dempster. One out. Top of the sixth inning. Cubs with a 1-0 lead. Diamondbacks runners on first and second with one away. Look at tomorrow's starters. You mentioned earlier Randy Johnson has never lost to the Cubs. He's 12-0. 4-0 at Wrigley. His last start here was back in 2001. A 4-0 victory. As a fellow by the name of Mark Grace drove in two runs in that game for the Diamondbacks. And the Cubs only had one hit. Ron Coomer had the only I Cubs hit that day. day. Believe it or not, Randy Johnson only went five innings that day. Young Young Kim got the save. It was a four-inning save. Wow. I don't know if you I don't know if we'll ever see that again. Turned to Wrigley Field. Well, that was special. After wearing Cub uniform for 13 seasons. 13 great seasons. That swing. Ball three, says the first base umpire, Lance Barksdale. Well, now all of a sudden, Ryan Dempster finding himself in a mess. This pitch stays up. Let's see. Did he swing? It's tough to tell from that angle. It was awfully close. He's going to have to make a pitch here, three and one to Jackson. Oh, he missed. Missing high with the fastball. So now the Diamondbacks have loaded the bases. After the Cubs loaded the bases in the last half inning. Larry Rothschild out for a chat. Second walk issued by Dempster today. Pitch count start to climb. Kenny, that was pitch number 101. And here we are, one out in the sixth inning. So he hasn't been real economical with the pitch count, but he's been awfully good. So they're going to stay with him here with the bases loaded and one out. This time it's the Diamondbacks' turn. And ironically, it's Justin Upton who made the throw from right field in the bottom of the fifth inning with the bases loaded on the 
Ball hit by Derek Lee. So now Reed Johnson at the plate. So now Upton gets his chance with the bases loaded. Good speed at third and Ojeda. Good speed at second and Drew. Upton fouls off the first pitch from Dempster. Nothing and one. Base is full of Diamondbacks. Cubs lead 1-0. Top of the sixth inning from Wrigley Field. Missing low and away, one and one. Up to at the plate, Mark Reynolds waiting on deck. Lou Pinella pacing. <laughs> I don't blame him. I think Lou would pace even if he's up 10 runs. Two one two Upton. Now two and two. Oh, what a gorgeous slider that was for Dempster at a great time. He might have got a generous strike call there from Dana DeMew. And from that angle, he definitely got a generous strike call from Dana DeMew. Two two. Dempster has thrown 20 pitches in this inning alone. Howie continues to throw in the Cubs pen. And remember Justin Upton up there in the top five in strikeouts, so a lot of talent. Oh my goodness gracious. Ryan Dempster cannot believe that was not called strike three, and really I can't either. Bit low, perhaps. That's what he. That's what Dana DeMuth had to call. Yeah, uh, Ryan Dempster. Where do you want me to throw it, Dana? Base is loaded. One out. Payoff pitch to Upton. That's the bat on it. Just foul. Having a good battle here with the bases loaded. One out. The veteran Dempster against the. The youthful Justin Upton. What's going to win out? Experience or just flat out raw talent? Ball four, a bases loaded walk. And the Diamondbacks tie the game at one. Oh, what a frustrating at bat that had to be for Dempster. Thought he had him struck out, didn't get the call, and ends up walking in a run. Let's take a look at how it transpired. Slider there for strike one. Missed with a slider. Missed with a fastball. Got a generous call there. Now up he's battling. That was the pitch that killed Dempster. Didn't miss by much with that one either, Kenny. And now Reynolds with the bases loaded takes ball one. The Diamondbacks score their first run since the first inning of yesterday's game, and it comes on a bases loaded walk. Now he's missing. I think fatigue has definitely set in. A lot of pitches being thrown now. Scott Air, the left hander, getting the reason along with Bob Howery. Air activated from the disabled list yesterday, has not pitched in a game this season for the Cubs. Who's going to stay in the dugout? Two and zero count on Reynolds. Bases loaded. One out. Two and one. Third back and threw it right by Mark Reynolds. Two and zero. Dempster's season high is 112 pitches. He has matched that right here. 
Lou told us before the game he has built up his stamina. Pitch between 115 and 120. Long throw. Out at first is Reynolds, but coming at the score is Drew. And the Diamondbacks have their first lead of the afternoon. It's now 2-1 to one Arizona. Ontario has made some tremendous plays. Look at him go to a knee and just throw a rocket across the diamond. And that's the right call over there by Barksdale. Mark Reynolds didn't agree with the call, but what a super play again by Terrio. He just got him. But the RBI ground out nonetheless for Reynolds gives the Diamondbacks the lead. Sure enough, Kenny. Home momentum swung right back to the Diamondbacks all on one play. 27th run battered in for Reynolds. Now second and third with two outs. Jackson on third. Upton takes his lead off second. Snyder singled to the second, struck out in the fifth. Nope. Now quickly the tide turned. Cubs had the bases loaded, one out with a one-nothing lead. In the bottom of the fifth inning, Lee flied out to right. Upton with the throw to the plate. The nail Reed Johnson, and now the Diamondbacks load the bases in the sixth. And score two runs, looking for more. 30th pitch of the inning by Dempster in for a strike. One and two. Brandon Petters throwing in the Arizona pen. Well, Ryan Dempster just having on guts alone right here. Tank's about empty. Lou Pinello staying with his, his guy. Run through this and give up two runs, you'd have to say did a pretty good job. Allowed only three base runners over the first five innings. Allows two runs here in the sixth. So the Diamondbacks are taking a two to one lead here at Wrigley. Bottom of the sixth inning. Diamondbacks with a two to one lead. Max Scherzer will face the middle of the order. Aramis Ramirez takes strike one. Ramirez doubled back in the second inning, was thrown out attempting to score. Popped out to second in the fourth. Fastball missing away, one and one. Back to the screen, one and two. Ryan Dempster after the last half inning, Mark, went over to the home plate umpire, Dana DeMuth, to have a chat, we presume, about that pitch. And that's what, that was the one. Like He's like, you got to be kidding me. Where do you want me to throw it? And his Scherzer just comes right back to strike out Ramirez. But this is great right here. Player and umpire just getting together to find out just what's going on. Not showing anybody up, not getting loud with each other. That's a veteran, a veteran umpire and a veteran pitcher just trying to get on the same page. Hey, where'd you have that pitch? Because I had it for a strike. I had it a little bit low, Ryan. You know, and but that that's the that that's very well done on both their parts. Carry yourself with class. So one out. Fukudome at the plate. You could learn a little bit from Ryan Dempsey there, Kenny. Well, he does like the sport of hockey. That's right. Canadian guy. He can still, he, he's still fuming over that call. I don't blame him. Luka Dome, left field. Salazar, two away. Time now for the Gillette Rookie of the Month Award. The National League winner for April is Cubs catcher Giovanni Soto. Gillette Fusion Power feed on. Show the world how phenomenal you can be with Fusion Power, the world's most comfortable shave. A look at Soto's numbers during the month of April. Two out, Soto at the plate. Mark, I know that you have noticed that Max Scherzer has two different color eyes. Yes, he does. He's got a brown one and a blue one. 
Left eye is brown, right eye is blue. We've done some extensive research, and that's not trick photography, no. folks. Those are his eyes. It is a condition known as heterochromia. Huh? Heterochromia. Okay. You know, I was at my ophthalmologist on Thursday, Dr. Right. Alan Ross, Northern New Jersey, big baseball fan, okay. and I was telling him about Max Scherzer, and he actually emailed me some information about other people who have two different color eyes, including any famous people? Dan Aykroyd. I didn't know that. Joe Pesci. Alexander the Great. Really? That's cool. So I guess Joe Pesci maybe wears his in Goodfellas. I didn't notice him having two different colored eyes. Well, apparently, according to Dr. Ross, he has made color contacts for people ah. with heterochromia so that they are not asked throughout their entire life, hey, do you know you have two different color eyes? <laughs> heterochromia, we like to call it here. An elbow injury. He did make seven minor league rehab appearances. They're facing... Jeff Salazar leading off for the Diamondbacks in the top of the seventh inning. Arizona leading 2-1. to one. Yeah, Scott Ayer, his out pitch is his slider. And that's the pitch he used to effectively handle left-handed hitters such as Jeff Salazar, but he falls behind. Probably have to throw a fastball. Chris Burke has come out into the on-deck circle. He will bat for the pitcher, Matt Scherzer. Well, you had to have been impressed with what you saw from the young right-hander today, Max Scherzer, and I'm sure his family that's in attendance today is very pleased with their their guy. First big lead start at Wrigley for the St. Louis native. And he will leave with a two to one lead. That's what Bob Melvin, the manager of the Diamondbacks, that's kind of his MO, get his starters through six, then hand it to Chad Qualls in the seventh, Tony Payne in the eighth, and Brandon Lyon in the ninth. Air catching the inside corner, two and two on Salazar. Scherzer went four to third out of the bullpen in his first major league appearance. Lasted only four innings in his first major league start on Monday. So Scherzer goes six today. Allowing only one run. And you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, well, why would you take him out? Only 82 pitches. So there's still plenty of gas in the tank, but they're going to be careful with, with him. They're going to take care of him. That, that young, very valuable arm, they don't want to overextend him too quickly. Salazar pops it up to the left side. Backpedaling is Terrio. Moving to his right. Makes the catch retire Salazar so one away here in the Arizona seventh as we head west to Genius Alaska to the DL. Chris Burke has been sitting for Max Scherzer. Burke one for six as a pinch hitter, hitting just 140 overall. Yeah, it's been a rough, rough go for, for Chris Burke. He came over in a deal that sent Jose Valverde to the Houston Astros. In return, the Diamondbacks got Chad Qualls and this man. Two on Burke with one away. Scott Ayer in relief of Ryan Dempster, who threw 118 pitches. Most pitches in a game mark for Dempster since September of 02 with Cincinnati. Spent the last three years, of course, pitching out of the bullpen. I was very impressed with Ryan Dempster today. He's got a little bit wild there in the top of the sixth inning, and it cost him a couple of scratch runs, but he was really one call. Away from 
from going up a zero in that end. One, two, now two balls, two strikes. Shot but Lou's pacing. Lou is pacing again. Burke called out on strikes. Two up, two down for the Diamondbacks here in the seventh. Pepsi, the official soft drink of Major League Baseball. Would like to congratulate Chen Ming Wang, April's Pepsi Clutch Performer of the Month, as voted on by the fans. To learn more about Pepsi's Clutch Performer of the Month award, visit PepsiClutch.com. Wang, 5 0 during the month of April, now has six wins. He's tied with three other pitchers for the American League lead. Of course, the National League and Major League leader is Brandon Webb of the Diamondbacks. As Ojeda has his second base hit of this game. Look at Augie Ojeda play baseball. I mean, he just is such a breath of fresh air. He's one of those guys can he just can't help but root for. I mean, paid the price in the minor leagues. The few times he's been in the big leagues, didn't get much playing time. And now Orlando Hudson goes down, and Augie Ojeda just steps right in and just playing lights out baseball. So a two out base runner for the Diamondbacks. And Stephen Drew steps in. We mentioned Brandon Webb, National League Pitcher of the Month for April. Record of 8 and 0. First League oh, pitcher to win his first eight starts since John Garland of the White Sox did it three years ago. It's amazing. He's, he's made it look very easy. Webb scheduled to pitch again on Wednesday against Colorado. He's the first National League pitcher to win his first eight starts since Pedro Martinez did it back in 1997. It doesn't happen very often. But, you know, Brandon Webb now, I guess when you talk about best pitchers in the game, I and mean, sure, obviously, ain't no, but you know, runner-up for Cy Young last year, Cy Young Award winner the year before. I mean, you have to put him in there with Jake Peavy and you know, it's just the best. Look at Webb's numbers since 2005. Most wins in the National League. Most innings pitched. Third in third run average. And that, that, the, the innings pitched is, is what every manager will say, yeah, that's what I want. Somebody asked you earlier what's the biggest difference between last year's Diamondbacks club, which won the division, won a round in the playoffs, and this year's. How is this year's club better? And you said starting pitching. Well, the starting pitching. And the addition of Dan Heron, who was a tough luck loser here yesterday, threw the ball very well and just got outpitched by Ted Lilly. But he's been a huge addition. Randy Johnson is healthy this year, and that certainly helps. Then you see guys like Max Scherzer in there now. Micah Owens is off to a terrific start. And the bullpen has been number one in, in the National League as well. Brandon Lyons settling in to be a reliable closer. Three one to Drew. Line to left into the glove of Soriano. Seventh inning stretch time in Chicago.
that was yesterday afternoon. I want to know how much time you spent in front of the mirror practicing <laughs> over the last week. Well, that's actually one of those songs, Kenny. I think you can butcher it, and it still sounds okay. Uh, e even I can sing that one. But my, I had a goal. I just wanted to sound better than Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> And that was the second time you've done it. That's the second time. I was, it's actually, I was nervous. You need to do that. I think, I think I'd you love should. To. I think you should. And, and it's, I was pleased to see that you did not get thrown out by the home plate umpire. <laughs> you said you were more nervous yesterday than the first time. Yeah, for some reason. I don't know why I was so nervous yesterday, but I, I just was, I don't know, I had a fear stage fright of some kind we got a new pit we got a new pitcher kenny chad qualls and mark DeRosa let off the inning with a single into right field and a lot of times if you're a team that's struggling to hit the the starter you're you welcome anybody but matt scherzer right now chad qualls having a great start to his season but if you're a cub the way max scherzer was Going through, you're saying, all right, anybody but him. Darrell Ward has come out into the on-deck circle. The bat for Scott Ayer. Diamondbacks lead 2-1. to one. Bottom of the seventh inning from Wrigley. DeRosa leadoff single here in the seventh. Reed Johnson at the plate. Johnson hit by a pitch his last time up and then was thrown out by the right fielder Upton. Attempting to score. Johnson lays down the punt. So Johnson does his job. Very nice. Sacrifice 3 4. Fox Saturday Baseball, sponsored by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. By Amp Energy for energy, focus, and control. Amp yourself. And by Just For Men, stay in the game with Just For Men, hair color. Well, Darrell Ward, who has had a nice career off the bench, has struggled this season as a pitch hitter, Mark. He is 0 for 14. Yeah. Darrell Ward is too good a hitter to be in that kind of a slump, but he's going to be asked to tie the game up or maybe give his ball club the lead here after a beautiful bump by Reed Johnson to Move DeRosa in the scoring position. So DeRosa takes his lead off second with one out. The first pitch to Ward, low and inside, ball one. Big Chad Qualls, a sinker baller, throws in the low to mid 90s. A lot of ground balls, an occasional slider to get a strikeout. Ball missing away. Cubs just one for six today with runners in scoring position. They scored their only run back in the third. When Soriano took off from first on a Terrio single to right, came all the way around, scored on the Upton error. As Upton bobbled the ball in right field and was slow to get it back in. Fastball in for a strike, two and one. Chad Qualls in relief of Max Scherzer, who threw 82 pitches in his second Major League start. Allowed one run on five hits in six innings. The run was unearned. One walk, six strikeouts. Two one to Ward. Sends this one into left field. It's a fair ball. DeRosa coming home. He will score. Darrell Ward with a pinch hit RBI single, tying this game at two. Well, it had to come to an end, and it certainly did. Darrell Ward gets the big base hit. He's going to be removed for a pinch runner, and the crowd is going to give him some much-deserved love here at Ridley Field. Jason Marquis who will start for the Cubs on Monday, will run for Gary Ward. And he just slices a line drive down the left field line. Nice job by Salazar to cut it off. And 
Pulled Big Darrell Ward to a single, but yeah, I don't blame you. Soriano takes a called strike. Two for three today. Hits in his last two at bats. So Luke Canella, instead of using one of his remaining position players, as he has done in the past, along with Jason Marquis, pinch run here in the seventh inning. Cubs with a run in the third. And a run here in the seventh. Diamondbacks scored both of their runs in the top of the sixth inning. One and two on Soriano. Ryan Terrio waiting on deck. So Scherzer will not be involved in the decision. He will take a no decision to the shower, and five days from now, he'll, he'll realize that he threw the ball off pretty well. Left with a two to one lead. Dempster off the hook as well. That's exactly right. Well, like I said, as an offense and as a lineup, when the guy's just mowing through, you like sure as it was. You welcome somebody else into the ball game. I don't care how well he's been throwing in the past. One two to Soriano. It gets past Snyder. Marquis moves to second. I think got a break. They said he didn't swing. It looks like he did. And they use a hockey term that they got the five hole of Chris Snyder. Through the five hole. Chicago's a big hockey town. They know what I'm talking about. Blackhawks on the comeback trail. Young and talented. So Marquis now in scoring position. Broken bat foul. God, There's the javelin. Runs in and buzz saws. Soriano, goodness gracious. Some new lumber for Soriano. Tied at two, bottom of the seventh inning. Runner on second, one out. Pinch single off the bat of Gary Ward, tied to score. Two, two Soriano base hit left center field rolls to the Ivy Marquis will score the Cubs take a three to two lead well the Cubs do exactly what you have to do when you bring in a reliever for a guy that is dominating you you pounce on him, and that's exactly what they've done. Soriano, that's just a hanging slider right in the middle of the zone, and he clobbered it into the left center gap. So Bob Melvin removing Max Scherzer from the ball game comes back to bite him. Here's Terrio hit by a pitch his last time up. Fouls it off to the right side, nothing at one. Soriano with the go-ahead run batted in, not shy at the plate today. He faced 15 pitches, and he swung at 11 of them. <laughs> Three big base hits. Scored a big run. Drove in the go-ahead.
first time in years didn't work. Maybe next week. One of my favorite broadcasters, Marty Brenneman. That play hadn't worked since Abner Doubleday was a teenager. Huh. One and two, Ontario. By the way, with Soriano's three hits today, he has raised his average from 191 all the way up to 215. Still early enough that a three or four hit game will raise you 30 points or so. so it's not going to take long for him to get it going. Chad Ball's having a tough time. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Bottom of the seventh inning, two runs on three hits in the inning for the Cubs. Up the middle, base hit. Rounding third is Soriano. The throw to the plate from Young is not in time. The fourth play at the plate today. And Soriano has his second run. Chad Qualls has come in and he's getting clobbered around here in the bottom of the seventh inning. A nice slide there to avoid the tag. I mean, just a bullet right back up the box. Nice throw from Chris Young. One hop right on the button. Tough to tell from that angle. He tagged him right in the fanny area. Let's see if that hand got in there. Get out of the way, Dana. He was right there looking right at it. It's a good call. Brandon Metters on to face Derek Lee. And the fastball misses away. Ball one. Metters in relief of Chad Qualls, making his 16th appearance for the Diamondbacks this season with Terrio on at first. One out. Three runs in for the Cubs here in the seventh. Big bender in there for strike one. Chad Qualls had allowed only two earned runs all season coming into the game today. A rare day where Chad Qualls gets hit hard. Brandon Meadows is going to come and try and restore a little bit of order and try to keep the Diamondbacks in this thing. Qualls has allowed three runs in the inning, and Terrio is his responsibility as well. RBIs for Ward, Soriano, and Terrio. Here in the seventh inning. Fastball missing away, two and one. Matters the third pitcher of the day for Bob Melvin, the starter. Max Scherzer went six innings, allowed one run on five hits. The run was unearned. Before the Cubs got to Qualls here in the seventh. Fastball high, three and one.
Mario goes and Lee fouls it back to the screen. Look at Soriano. Doesn't look like he's going very hard there, does it? Makes you wonder if his leg's bothering him or something. Nice like save! That. That's great sound from Dana. He knew it the home plate umpire. He's safe. He beat it. You wonder about Soriano there. He didn't look like he was too healthy coming around third, did he? Well, he missed some time last week with a strained right calf. Might still be bothering him. Three hits today. He scored two runs. He seems like he's all right to me. Terrio goes. Diving play by Ojeda. But the Cubs stay out of the double play with Terrio on the move. Oh, what a gorgeous play by Ojeda. That is such a difficult play, folks. You're going to cover the bag. Now you got to just reverse and dive. And Rob Derek Lee of another base hit. Augie all smiles. Yeah, I don't blame him. Making plays like that. Hitting 380. Lots to be happy about. Ball high and tight, one and one. Aramis Ramirez, one for three, doubled back in the second inning. Cubs three runs here in the seventh on four hits. They've taken a four to two lead. Looking ahead, the Diamondbacks will have Young, Jackson, and Upton do up in the top of the eighth. Two for Meadows. Base hit into right center. Around third is Terrio. He will score. The Cubs lead is now 5 2. 24th run batted in of the season for Aramis Ramirez. Well, Meadows just hangs a slider in the middle of the plate. Aramis Ramirez just scalds it right back into center field. Those were. Those were fun to hit. Cubs are pouring it on now. Four runs in the inning. Cubs here in the seventh. Four for four with runners in scoring position. Four runs on five hits in the inning. Against balls and betters. Fukudome 0 for 2 with a walk. Cub to bat here in the seventh inning. Fukudome, deep center field, Young back on the warning track. It is out of here. Second home run of the season for Fukudome in his first. Since opening day, the Cubs' lead is now 7-2. Well, the wind's blowing in here at Wrigley Field, but Fukudome doesn't care. He just hammered one into left center bleachers. And they're going crazy here at Wrigley Field.
that bullpen been really solid this year, but not today. A touchdown here in the bottom of the seventh. And now the fans chanting, Buka Dome. His first home run since March 31st against Eric Gagne. Bukadome takes Brandon Metters deep. The Cubs have scored six runs here in the seventh inning. Let's take a look at the pitch. Fast ball down the middle. The list of it. And go into your trot, young man. First home run allowed by Metters this season. And 17 and two thirds. This should finally end the inning as Soto pops out to Drew. The Cubs battle round. Time out for a direct TV game break with Cheney. With his second home run of the season and then a standing ovation as he took his position in right field. The bleacher bums. I remember many, many games, Kenny, where a right fielder by the name of Andre Dawson, he'd go out there and it was the the swami, the the, the bowing to him. And then of course Sammy Sosa charging yeah. out the right field, and now it's Bukadome. Bob Howry, the third Cubs pitcher of the day. Yeah, Cub players come and go, but the fans, they love them all. Nothing and two on Young. Leading off for the Diamondbacks here in the eighth. And Young sends this one into the left field corner. Settling under it is Soriano for out number one. Well, Mark, whenever you and I show up in a major league broadcast booth, we head to the press box, pick up the game notes, which right. are put out by the public relations department. And here in Chicago Whoa, this year, a, a separate set of game notes in Japanese. For the Japanese media that follow every swing and every pitch to Fukudome. They will have to update his home run number. That's right. Strike call. Nothing and one on Connor Jackson, who is 0 for 2. Walked his last time up. Cubs in the bottom of the seventh. Six runs on six hits against Chad Qualls and Brandon Metters. And with their six-run inning, the Cubs have overtaken the Diamondbacks as the highest-scoring team in the major leagues this season. Well, that six-run inning, far and away, the most that the Diamondbacks have given up in an inning this year. And it, a very solid bullpen coming into this afternoon's game, but Matters and Qualls were hit hard today. Coming into the game, Diamondbacks had outscored the Cubs by four runs, the two highest-scoring teams in baseball. Cubs with a 7-2 lead. Max Scherzer allowed one run. It was unearned. The bullpen allowed six runs in one inning. The one two to Jackson. Pops it up to the left side. The shortstop Cario is under it for out number two. Our game summary brought to you by Flomax. Scherzer making his second career start. Pitched well. Cubs. Season high, six runs in the seventh. As the Diamondbacks bullpen implodes in the seventh inning, Cubs bat around. They trail 2-1 heading into the bottom of the seventh and scored six. The old manual scoreboard here at Wrigley Field. One of the many great things about coming here. If you had to pick your favorite thing about coming to Wrigley Field. Can you pick just one? 
No, it's, I mean, the whole experience, you know, the, the hundreds of things that make Wrigley Field special. Uh, you know, that's one of them, the old manual scoreboard, you know, the, the rooftops. You know, how many how many places can you, you know, not, not buy a ticket or not go inside the stadium to see the ball game? You ever go up to one of the rooftops? I have. I have been, uh, not to watch a game, but I've been, uh, I've attended a uh, soiree or two up there. A lot of orange juice and <laughs> milk. Yeah. One and two now on Upton. But I still haven't taken in a game in the bleachers, and I want to do that. Short sleeves on a cool afternoon. This is nuts. Ah, this is bare weather here. Heard you run into Mike Ditka last night. I did run into the coach last night at his restaurant. Oh, he's a fun guy to hang around. Tell stories of the, the 85 Bears. Darlington, that's Orlando Hudson's hometown. Orlando Hudson's hometown, Darlington. And I'm not going to ask you this week if you're, a, if you're a NASCAR fan. I promise I won't ask you. Done a little bit of research since we last spoke. <laughs> a 1 2 3 8 for Bob Howery. 7 2 Cubs. by Flomax by XM Radio with Major League Baseball every team every game and by Gillette Fusion Power Phenom Fusion Power the world's most comfortable shade Doug Slayton into pitch for the Diamondbacks here in the bottom of the eighth inning Mark DeRosa leading things off for the Cubs singled and came around to score the tying run in the seventh inning. Spiken, a 28-year-old left-hander. Ninth year in the Diamondbacks organization. After Qualls and Metters allowed six runs in the seventh inning. The 0 to the Rosa. Well, celebrate Mother's Day by going to bat against breast cancer. You can purchase your pink bat today at participating team stores and at MLB.com. For the third year in a row, Major League Baseball players will have the opportunity to use pink Louisville Slugger bats on Mother's Day tomorrow. Louisville Slugger is donating pink bats to more than 350 Major League players who have requested them for Mother's Day. And Mark, did you ever think you would be holding a pink bat? In Wrigley Field, I would have, I would have loved to have had this, you know, right there, pow, right in a kisser. Yeah, they're legitimate bats too. These are not just souvenir type bats. These are real. And actually, your, yours has your name on it. Mine has my name on it. My girls are going to be fighting over this thing. <laughs> well, I've got two boys, Kenny, but I think they can get in touch with their feminine side and use a pink bat. Rosa called out on strikes as we check in with Jeannie. All right, thanks very much, Jeannie. A look at the National League Central Division standings. We have Bree Johnson at the plate. By the way, the pink Louisville Slugger bats used in games tomorrow will be available via auction on MLB.com starting on Monday. Make sure to call your mother, Kenny. I will actually see you tomorrow. Oh, good. Did you know, don't ask me where I read this in the last 24 hours, today is the 100th anniversary of the first Mother's Day celebration in the United States? Really? No, I did not know that. May 10th, that comes from the useless information file. Oh, that's not useless. Well, I wonder what what made 
somebody or whoever's in charge say, by the way, this day is going to be Mother's Day. Would you way, that Reed, answer? Reed Johnson hit by a pitch for the second time today and the eighth time this season. But it was in Philadelphia 100 years ago today, May 10th, 1908, the first Mother's Day celebration in the U.S. That has become a big tradition. I, oh, man. A little bitty one in the left arm and a, well, a little bitty one in the right, too. Oh, she's happy. Cubs are winning, Mom. And they're wearing pink to match our bats. Wow, that's a great shot. Here's Ronnie Cedeno pinch hitting for Bob Howry with Johnson on at first. Daniel pops it up to the right side. Long run for Ojeda. And he will make the catch for out number two. Well, we mentioned that Orlando Hudson is a native of Darlington. He's yeah. excited about NASCAR on Fox. Hi, I'm Orlando Hudson. And this weekend, you know where the NASCAR race is. My hometown, Darlington, South Carolina. Stay tuned on Fox for NASCAR next. That dial. That's right. That's very well done, Orlando Hudson. Wellington, South Carolina. Here's Soriano. And Alfonso has his fourth base hit of the game. Yeah, he's going to be a 300 hitter before the day's huh. over. 191 coming into the game. Not anymore, first pitch he sees. I know you're shocked, Kenny, but he swung at it. And ripped it into left field. He's now swung at 12 out of 16 offerings today. Home plate is a no passing zone. Do not pass, he says. I'm swinging at it. Mario, right field, Upton. We head to the ninth in Chicago. 7-2 Cubs. Carlos Barbol at the pitch the ninth for the Cubs. Mark Reynolds takes a call strike, nothing and one. 18th appearance of the season for Barbol. The fourth Cubs pitcher today. Well, this kid's got such a great arm, Marmol. Great fastball, a terrific breaking ball as well. Back play this game two to one. Cup scored six in the seventh as Reynolds strikes out on three pitches. Great job by our entire crew today here at Wrigley, led by producer Larry Lancaster, our director John Moore, associate director Eric Billigmeyer, broadcast associate Yvonne Wagner. Our technical producer is Craig Marlowe, the technical director Rick Tugman. Studio show produced by Don Bowie, directed by Bob Levy. The associate director is Stephanie Medina. The coordinating producer of the studio show is Scott Ackerson. The studio technical supervisor is Jack Simmons. The senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown. And the executive producers are David Hill and Ed Gorin. Thanks to Ben Bulma and Mike Eldridge here in the booth. Mark Seguro in the truck. As the Cubs look to win their second in a row over the Diamondbacks following yesterday's 3-1 victory. Comes with a 7-2 lead here in the top of the ninth inning. Gotta like what you're seeing. If you're a Cub fan, you've won the first, or you're looking to win the first two games. It's gonna take a big comeback here in the top of the ninth inning and one out, but and then you hand the ball to Carlos Zambrano tomorrow afternoon. 
Soriano on the warning track in left field. Makes the catch to retire Snyder. And now the Cubs are one out away. A four-hit day for Alfonso Soriano. He is our Chevrolet player of the game. Four hits, two runs. He drove in a run. Chevy proud to recognize today's best and tomorrow's future. Supporting youth baseball nationwide. Chevy and American Revolution. Big day for Soriano. Yeah, he was everywhere today. By the way, Cub pitchers have struck out 10 Diamondbacks today. Yesterday, 12 strikeouts. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier, Kenny. This is a team that will strike out and strike out a lot. Jeff Salazar represents the Diamondbacks' last hope. He is 0 for 3. Carlos Zambrano and Randy Johnson tomorrow in the series finale. There's Zambrano. He's 5 and 1 with an earned run average under 2. The Brewers have come back, tied the Cardinals at 3. So that's good news for the Cubs. If Milwaukee wins the game. Cubs would finish the day tied atop the Central Division with the Cardinals. Should St. Louis lose? Salazar down to first as Miguel Montero will pitch it for Slate. Canella still pacing in the dugout despite the five run lead. Two outs in the ninth, five run lead. And here's Montero, the backup catcher. And the pitch gets away from Soto. Salazar moves to second. So the Diamondbacks with a runner in scoring position. Montero is two for five as a pinch hitter this season for Arizona. Two outs, top of the ninth inning, strike one. Two. I'm all just rearing back and letting it fly now. He's feeling it. And so are Cup fans. One strike away from their second consecutive victory over Arizona. Montero, center field. Reed Johnson makes the catch and the Cubs win it. Seven to two. Scott Ayer. In his first major league appearance this season, picks up the win. Chad calls the loss. He drops to 0 and 4. The Cubs with a six run seventh inning. And they defeat the Diamondbacks here at Wrigley today. Only four hits for Arizona. Cubs seven runs on 12 base hits. For Mark Race and our entire crew, this is Kenny Albert saying so long from Wrigley Field. In Chicago, Alfonso Soriano with four hits today. He scored two runs, and he drove in a run as well. The Cubs win it 7-2 over the Diamondbacks. As we send you west to Los Angeles, take it away, Jeannie Zalasco.